Hello and welcome back to Eagle Rising and in the previous episode I didn't even realize because you know achievements are a little bit uh, you know a little bit weird to kind of get uh, because we need to install a mod to be able to do that if we're wanting to play in sandbox mode hilariously enough not entirely sure why that's still a thing but anyway we do have that mod installed and as a result I actually did gain this rather wonderful achievement I, I don't even know how many people have this uh, in total, but according to Steam, 0.1% of players have this achievement. It's called Slice and Dice. I don't know whether you have it if you play yourself, but by all means, let me know if you have Slice and Dice, because that that seems, I don't even know, it's kind of a bit weird. Don't really know what, um, <laughs> what I did to actually gain this, but it says, kill 10 enemies with a successful chain attack combo. That is its description. Very strange indeed. I was certainly not expecting myself to be able to do that, considering I'm not really doing huge amounts of damage. I mean, you can see me playing in this particular mod and not really doing that much. I mean, I'm, you know, obviously running around. I have a, I have a Falx here, which I can use in a two-handed fashion. I also have a spear. I also have a bunch of thrown weapons and so on and so forth, but... That's pretty much it. I don't really have anything else, so it's kind of a bit, kind of a bit weird because I'm not really using the Falx too often. I don't think. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm not using it enough. Maybe I need to use it more or less, or I don't know. I mean, generally, I just wanted to try and level up my pole arms anyway, so I'm not really using the Falx that much because I know, for a fact, I should be able to basically murder anyone that I want as long as I use the Falx and. With the spear, I need a bit more practice, in my opinion. You know, I need to get a little bit better with it. It is going to make things much, much easier for us in the long run. You know, when we're actually up against a bunch of enemies that have cavalry units available for them. And it's going to make everything so simple for us to counter them. I'm actually wondering, can I even block with this? I can actually block with this. Oh, that is hilarious. Okay, so this banner that I have right here is technically a shield and I can block with it. I have no idea what kind of size it has or what kind of hitbox it has, but I guess we'll uh, we'll find that out in due time when I'm being attacked by some crazed maniac with a couched lance aimed at my face. And then we'll see whether, you know, that actually takes care of him or whether we have to uh, replace it or something like that. I don't know, but it seems pretty cool as it is. It seems like it has a lot of durability and everything. You can see here that we actually had a very close call as well. These raiders were just about to attack this caravan just as I was about to enter to help with the previous band. So we actually would have been in a situation where we'd be facing 80 units instead of just 40 each time which in my opinion is much, much easier. Let's just say that. Anyway, we do get a nice opportunity to use some more thrown weapons here. As I say, I really love thrown, we thrown weapons in this game. It's it's kind of a bit weird, as I say, because I, I have really not had a very good history with them at all. Kind of makes me want to play Warband and actually use thrown weapons in that, but obviously I did do my anniversary series relatively recently, and I didn't use them. Yeah, I didn't use them. I was actually planning on using them, but it just never happened because we just decided to use a bow instead. And even when I was using a bow, I didn't really use it that often. So yeah, kind of a, I don't know, kind of a bit of a shame, but I think it might just be because most of the offerings in native in Warband in regards to equipment are pretty, I'm not going to say lackluster, but I would definitely say that they're not very, not very good. I could be wrong about that, but from what I can remember, when you've played a, a, a total conversion like Prophecy of Pendor or something along those lines, when you've played something like that, and then you go to native and you think, oh wow, look at this piece of equipment, it's, it's kind of terrible, right? Well, yeah, it is in comparison to to the uh, you know Ruby Rune Bow or something along those lines, because the Ruby Rune Bow is amazing, it is so incredibly powerful and very fun to use, very satisfying. And it kind of gives me noble noble bow vibes, you know, because in, uh, in Bannerlord, obviously, we're talking about the noble bow from Batanian territory. It is an incredible weapon. 
and I was using that extensively in the Land of Seeker series and I gotta say it's probably my favorite bow ever which is really quite surprising because let's face it you know I'm I'm a bit of a stickler you know sometimes I uh, I have a very specific like about a certain weapon or a certain piece of equipment or whatever and uh, obviously the noble bow I think is probably the best bow in the game so that probably could be the reason you know let's face it you know if, if something is just that good you can't really get away from using it you know you got to kind of be like hey you know what just gonna have to just gonna have to use it because it's just so incredibly powerful and uh, yeah that, that's pretty much all there is to it I suppose but anyway we're just gonna upgrade a couple of people here just gonna sell the rest because I do actually need to start making some cash once again and uh, someone was very very kind in leaving a comment about the art uh, the whole archers flag thing and basically how they explained it was and this was this was actually so well explained that even I was able to understand it because you know me I, I tend to have some issues understanding some things sometimes but the point is this is actually something that you want to give to one of your companions and then you want that companion to lead your archer formation. And that's going to increase the range damage of basically every single one of your units by 0.05. Obviously, as I said in the previous episode as well, I think I did kind of refer to the fact that if you do have this bonus affect every single ranged unit that you have, it's going to be adding up pretty quickly. And it seems like that person also did actually give me a uh, bit of a confirmation on that so I'm really really pleased about that and um, yeah so we're obviously going to try and see maybe I should actually give it to Lorenzo because he's actually kind of a kind of a ranged guy as it is um, yeah maybe he's gonna maybe he's gonna do a pretty decent job with it who knows maybe he's gonna do okay and I'm actually thinking sh um, do we have any wooden wooden hammers here do you have any wooden hammers yeah they do have some wooden hammers not sure if I should buy any I don't actually have any hardwood or charcoal, so it makes no sense for me to do that. Actually, there is there is hardwood available here. I would like to do some more smithing, so let's actually just go ahead and do that real fast. I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to do anything more than that because I do I I do actually want to complete the caravan mission. There's also a tournament going on here. Oh wow, there are seven lords available for battle here. This is going to be a uh, pretty tough one, I think. Let's see how it goes. Obviously, you got to bear in mind that my bets are now basically giving me no money whatsoever. So this is really not a case of me doing it for cash anymore. And it's more of a case of me doing it for uh, just, just renown gains, basically. Just renown gains as much as I can. And we're just going to get a nice headshot right there. Another nice headshot. And he's out of there. Thank you very much. That was nice and easy. Real nice and quick. And now this is a huge free-for-all. Okay. I guess I'm just going to go and attack this guy. Uh... Yeah, going to play defensively, as I said. Oh, it's Roman. Oh, hello. Yeah, he might be a little bit difficult. No, never mind. All right. Yeah, I was actually thinking, oh, no, he's definitely going to be kind of harsh. But no, he wasn't that bad. Okay. Oh, oh, crush through. Yeah, got to be careful of that. If he goes for an overhead, I've just got to kind of strafe a little bit to the side. Make sure that he misses that. And then he's going to be wide open for a wonderful counterattack. That's the kind of thing we've got to go for here. Oh, we got some thrown weapons. All right, uh, let me see if I can actually do something with them. I'd like to try and get some headshots once again. Uh, a little bit off, a little bit, a little bit off center. Okay, he hit me. Well, that was not very nice of him, was it? Anyway, there we go. Nice. Unfortunately, two was not enough to be able to eliminate him, but that's enough. There we go. And there is a one-handed sword. Don't think this one-handed sword is going to be that useful for us, because as I say, I'm primarily using a falx. And we are also using, uh, you know, spear and, and thrown weapons and so on. So it's not really something that I'm going to be using. But who knows? Maybe it's going to be an upgrade for one of our companions. And if worst comes to worst, we can always just use it as a smithing tool to gain some wonderful resources. And then we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, apart from that, I think we should be pretty good. And um, yeah, I'm actually going to go into the trade screen now and just see if it's actually better than something these people are using. Yeah, there we go. Uh, someone actually did gain a bit of an upgrade from it. 
And what? Look at this sword. It's actually crazy good for a rusty sword. It has 60 cutting damage. That is very cool. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very, very strong. Anyway, let's see what happens with our caravan here. I'm actually thinking that I might want to recruit some more units. Uh, should, should I recruit some more units? I guess. I guess. Hmm. I'm a little bit, in, uh, you know, kind of in two minds about it because I'm thinking, hmm, should I recruit some more noble units in comparison to uh, peasants and things? And obviously peasants are not exactly the most powerful or anything like that. Okay, we're traveling to Cologne now. All right, let's see what we can do. Uh, hopefully we're going to get attacked by another 40 raiders. Yeah, there we go. There's the 40 raiders. Okay, that's perfect. Now, before we actually go in there, I'm just going to level up my polearm skill. And we're going to go for thrust damage. Yes, I know. We're going to go for thrust damage. I never usually go for this, but I'm going to be going for that. Primarily because infantry troops in the formation you're leading have plus 30 to their polearm skills. So if we do end up using a huge amount of different, well, spear-based units... It's going to be, oh yeah, it's going to be real nice. That's going to be a massive, massive benefit to us. So hopefully that's going to work out real, real, real good. And otherwise, apart from that, we do have 10% additional thrust damage ourselves. And that's obviously going to make a pretty significant difference. Because I don't know whether you noticed, but any single time I go in and I'm attacking with my with my spear, I'm not really getting too much out of it, you know, I'm, um, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm doing damage, obviously, and I'm doing some damage here and there, like, you know, I'm doing 80, 90 sometimes, but with that extra 10%, we might be able to actually start one-hitting some people, which would be really nice, as you can see right there, that I don't think would have been a one-hit kill if I hadn't gotten that 10%, obviously this would have been but yeah, there's a there's a bunch of reasons why it's actually pretty good to do that. Ah, didn't get the kill there, unfortunately. But you know, what can you do? Can't always get it how you want it, obviously. And otherwise, I think we're fine here. I'm just gonna do a nice little speed up, and that's it. There we go. Oh wait a minute, hello, this fellow's still alive. Let's take him out. There we go. Very nice. Okay, so we're getting really, really good amounts of influence here as well, and I'm very much hoping that we might come across a manual laborer task or something like that. And as you can see, we're gaining cash pretty significantly, surprisingly enough, because let's face it, we were down at what, 3.8K or something like that? That's that's pretty awful, you know, that's pretty awful. But nowadays, no, now we're, now we're looking, uh, things are looking up, let's just say that. Anyway, we do have more of these guys. Not going to be recruiting them or anything like that because we are completely full. And otherwise, we're just going to go through here, see if anyone needs an upgrade. This fellow actually does need an upgrade on his horse. Let's see. Does he have any riding skills? It is. Uh, he has very little riding skill, so maybe I actually don't even want him to use a mount. And everyone else is looking okay. Ada actually doesn't have anything good, so I guess we'll just give her a new horse just in case. And everyone else has already gotten upgrades, so we don't need to do anything else with that. All right, so there is actually something going on here. No, no. Oh, there's another escort merchant caravan quest. Do we actually want to do that? Mm, probably not. Probably not. Uh, I would like to do it because it just generally gives us a huge amount of influence and renown. You know, gives us around five to six to seven renown every single battle we do. But it is a bit of a bit of a large time sink and I'd love to get hmm love to get a manual laborer quest uh, I'm trying to find something here I'm trying to find the manual laborer quest and basically just going to every single iron ore village and uh, seeing where uh, uh, seeing where we can actually place our, our prisoners but it feels to me like that's not going to happen here is there a hardwood village somewhere nearby oh wow there's, there's a Wait a minute, there's a huge amount of iron ore villages in this area. It might be a good idea for me to purchase an enterprise either in Strasbourg here or maybe in Cologne itself. That might actually be a really, really lucrative thing to do, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh, actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe maybe Hamburg. Hamburg might actually be really good. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. We're going to go over to Hamburg real quick, and is there a hardwood village nearby? It doesn't seem like it. Oh, well, that's that's very sad, isn't it? Oh, well, never mind. It's not that big a deal, I guess. Anyway, ooh, ooh, wait, wait. Hello, hello. There might actually be a manual labor request here first. Yes, there is. Okay, this is absolutely perfect. Wonderful. He only needs 17. That's actually kind of sad. Mind your business, Headman. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so I already have manual laborers. We have a bunch of those. I'm just going to give him a bunch of tier threes. And then I don't even know how many we can even give. Uh, I think I can give a few more. Can I? How many can I actually give here? Is he really allowing me to get... No, no. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Really? He's allowing me to do all of them? So 44 prisoners. Okay, that's actually hilarious. Because now look at how much we've just gained. 12,000... 380. This is exactly the reason why, time and time again, I have said to you, manual labor quest combined with escort caravan, absolutely perfect. This is just amazing, because you're going to be able to do the escort caravan mission, you're going to get renown, influence, loot, experience, you know, basically a, a quad whammy right there. A quad whammy. Uh, yeah, I, that's not even a real term. Anyway, quad whammy, all things, you know, notwithstanding, yeah, how ridiculous it sounds. And then you get this quest, and then you're just like, well, yes, I have a huge amount of prisoners, and I can sell them to the manual laborer quest person. And then it's just absolutely amazing. So, and then you can just continue onward and do whatever else you want to do. And hopefully there's an escort caravan mission here or something like that. Oh, there is an army of poachers, so technically we could do that. Let me just take a quick look at the leaderboard here, because I feel like we might be in the, yes, we're in the top 10 now. And look at this, I only need one more victory to be able to... Uh, draw with the rest of these guys and then we'll be almost in the top five thoman still hasn't won more than 26 so technically we're gaining on him pretty fast so i'm i'm pretty happy with that anyway let's see what i can do here i would like mm, let me just actually see what i need to do here uh, we, we could do a crafting order let's actually see we can make a pike we can make a javelin these are all terrible, though, as you can see, 3,000 gold only. Ah, I'm not going to do that, actually. We're just going to go for a nice little sword over here. Let's see if I can actually make it good. Something like this, and then we're going to have to select something that uses only these parts. That's the thing that I'm wanting to do here. Uh, it's, it's, it's unlikely. Uh, maybe, maybe we're going to get lucky. Yeah, something like this. That's, oh wow, that's way too much. Okay, yeah, and maybe something like that, I guess. Something like that. And then we'll do, then we'll do that. Okay, there we go. That's actually perfect. I think this one is probably going to work out quite nicely for us. Or at least I hope so. And uh, let's have a look. Okay, are we going to, uh, can we get to 150? No way, no way, not in a million years. All right, that's absolutely fine though, because we can literally just do a little bit of this. And we could do this as well if we wanted to, technically, but I don't see the reason for that. So we're just going to go over here and just smelt a huge amount of our stuff, because that's all we can really do now. And I don't have enough charcoal. No! Oh, no. All right, well, let's actually just go into our marketplace here. Maybe they do have some hardwood. They have a, a little bit of hardwood. Not as much as I would want, of course, but... You know, beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. And we're just going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. And we are going to be getting a little bit more charcoal from the various things that we are um, smelting down here. I actually gained a level, amazingly enough. I'm at 142 smithing now as well, which is pretty pretty good. Not too bad, not too bad. And now we can just go back to the two-handed sword. And I'm going to be able to, hopefully, create something amazing. Create something amazing today. Oh, yes. There we go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, this is not looking particularly good. I'd like a two-handed only, if at all possible. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, this is not looking good at all. All right. Mm, no. No. I don't want that. Okay. I'm going to have to change the blade, I think. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So changing the blade obviously makes a difference. Uh, yeah. I'm going to just go for something like this again, because you can see here quite clearly, it just uses one resource, which is exactly what we want. And we basically just want to be able to level up our smithing. Obviously, leveling up our smithing is going to be better if you take higher difficulty weapons and things like that. But as it stands right now, I'm basically just going to do this just for the sake of unlocking new parts. And then we're going to be able to do exactly this again. And then we can do this once more. So basically, we are... <laughs> <laughs> we're crafting things and then we're smelting the same thing and we're losing one resource every single time we do that and we're basically just getting uh, smithing parts and so on every single time so we're just rinse and repeating and being able to refresh those as we do now bear in mind 
stamina right now is not really affecting me. And this is one thing that you've got to realize. If you want to play without any kind of stamina modifier or anything like that, that's absolutely fine. But all it is doing for me right now is saving me time. That's it. It's just saving me time. It's making it so that I don't have to wait here for some time and do basically nothing. That's it. That's the only thing it's doing for me. So it's basically just making it a little bit more streamlined. And otherwise, apart from that, it's exactly the same as it would be for anyone else. It's just time saved. That's it. Anyway, Army of Poachers is available. Not sure if I really want to do that right now. I probably won't do that. But you can see here, many, many smithing parts have been unlocked, which is really nice. And we've also leveled up. So let's take a quick look at our character screen here. As you can see, we do have the ability to increase our control skill, or we can increase our vigor skill. I think I will probably be, I don't even know, to be honest, because I'm currently doing quite well in terms of vigor, but I'm not sure how much we're actually going to be using thrown weapons, because obviously, as it stands, I would love to be able to get to impale, but it's 250. It's 250. It's going to be a long, long time coming. However, vigor, not sure how much I really need in vigor, and I could always place a point in that if I want to, you know what I mean? Um, so I think I'll go for control, actually. I think I will go for control just because we are so far behind on that at the moment. And apart from that, I'm thinking we'll probably put another point in throwing. And then we're just going to go back in here. Control is now four. We're just going to increase that to five just to get that a little bit more up to scratch. And we will end up doing the poacher quest, I think. And I would actually like to buy the smithy here if i can is there actually a person that has the smithy uh yeah this guy's a silversmith this guy doesn't own anything artisans tanner really okay so wait a minute wait a minute this is a place that does not have a smithy for some unknown reason why does it not have a smithy okay that's kind of interesting not sure why that would be the case because I would have expected them to just jump at the chance to have a smithy here. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to buy the tannery for 25000 Very expensive. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go over to our party screen right here. Select other. And then, wow, look at my olive press. It's absolutely terrible. Look at that. It's only giving me 73. That is really, really bad. So what we're going to do is we're just going to manage this. And we're going to change it to smithy. And that's what we're going to go for. So you can see here that it inputs iron and outputs melee weapons and uh, armor and all that stuff. And this is going to cost 2,000. Do I have 2,000? Yeah, I just about have 2,000. And hopefully that's going to work out real nice. So I need to go to Aloysia over here. And we need to do a little bit of waiting for the poachers to appear. And then we'll be able to fight them. Uh, do I need to level up anyone? Yeah, I need to level up a couple of people. Uh, let's just level up these guys into crossbowmen. And then we'll just wait here for some time. Hopefully the poachers will show themselves quite soon. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to maybe need to do some uh, some extra selling of weapons soon enough. Because as it stands, yeah, you can currently see my, my money situation has dwindled significantly. And there's not much I can really do about it apart from... You know, just continuing to do the quests, continuing to do the, the escort caravan missions and so on and so forth. And uh, just hoping that there's a manual labor quest or something like that. But it actually has helped us quite a bit, to be honest. I mean, I think so, at least, you know, being able to purchase this ironworks. But we've got to be very careful about this as well, because the ironworks in general, it's a great building. But the workshops and their production in Bannerlord are pretty bad and I, I think I also have a slight tweak in Chaos's tweaks as well I think I did change a little bit about how the workshops are run in an effort to try to rectify the issue where workshops basically just don't make any money whatsoever or they make very little money and so the 73 that I'm getting right now from my olive press that has already taken that modification into account, which just begs the question, well, how much would it actually give me otherwise? I think it would probably give me, what, half? Maybe, uh, maybe I don't know, maybe 75% less? I don't know. It would give me a lot less because I don't actually know the exact calculation of the, uh, the tweak that I've implemented because of obviously, you know, oh, 
Uh, I didn't want to go overboard on it. All right, um, the game crashed. So I'll see you soon. All right, so I actually just loaded back in and uh, let me tell you, I had another crash. Yes, I had another crash. So thankfully I do have a uh, an autosave roundabout here before we spent our money on the um, on the smithy and all that stuff. So yeah, it looks like I'm not going to be doing this army of poachers quest. I have no idea what's actually going on with it. But I can only hope that maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's something to do with the with the smithy or something like that. I'm actually not entirely sure. So I guess we're going to give it a go. And I'm just going to change this once again. And then we're going to see what happens. Because I'm obviously in a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a kind of questioning situation now. Because I'm thinking to myself, well, is it actually the smithy that is causing me to crash? Let me have a look. Mm, doesn't seem like it. Okay. Uh, so that's a little bit strange because basically I was going in second time around, went into the village, did the exact same thing again. Ah, there we go. There's the crash. Okay. All right. So apparently me purchasing a smithy there causes a crash. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't I don't know why. I don't know why. This, this is this is a, uh, supposed to be a game that's released and obviously you know mods and everything are going to cause a little bit of instability but it it should work you know it should work all right so here we go we're back again and i am apparently not going to be purchasing the smithy at hamburg here i'm not entirely sure what's even going on with that to be honest hopefully that is not going to be a uh, consistent crash i am very much hoping that it's going to be just something that happens when you buy that particular smithy and is not actually something to do with my game, because, uh, oh, okay, it is actually something to do with my game, and I'm not entirely sure what it is, because I have not changed anything, you saw exactly what I did in all of this, and as far as I'm aware, I haven't actually changed anything at all, so now I'm in a situation where I have no idea where to go from here because it is literally just going to continue crashing. Uh, I guess that's the end of the series. Um, <laughs> oh, it took me a long time to get this working in the first place. Oh, no. Oh, this is uh, this is actually terrible. This is actually really, really terrible. I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe I should just end the series here, even though I don't want to do that. I very much do not want to do that because it is... A huge amount of fun. I'm having a whale of a time with basically every single thing that's going on here. I love doing the smithing, love doing the the, the spear combat. You know, that's all that's all extremely fun. Uh, I don't know. If you have any suggestions, by all means, let me know. But for for now, I think that's probably going to have to be it for this episode. I really have no clue what I can do to try to rectify that because I have from the auto save that I had. I have done different things because I thought, hey, it's probably the poacher, right? It's probably the poacher quest. Tried not doing the poacher quest. Okay, it's not the poacher quest. I tried not purchasing the smithy. Nope, not the smithy either. So I'm not entirely sure what it is. It could be a unit. It could be a weapon. It could be, well, any any number of things that I have done in this episode that is causing this crash. So I have no idea. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode, and maybe, maybe the series itself, if I cannot get this fixed, that's the only thing that we're going to have to think about here, and maybe it would be a good idea for me to just choose something different to do anyway, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and my sincerest apologies for this. I really have no idea what's going on, and I'll see you next time.